Hello everybody, Ragtag Sagby here, welcome to the next episode. In this episode, we're doing Chapter 12, The Broken Sky. Hi. Now before we head in, if you do enjoy these videos, do like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and all that jazz so people can find me, help the channel grow, and let's head in, in. In and start Chapter 12. I think this one's also like a short one, so I might be able to get into one video. Excuse me, sir. May I have my glasses back? Huh? Oh, yeah. Here you go. Cereza, how did you get such magical glasses? <laughs> the glasses aren't magic, silly. I can see the monsters without them. Monsters? Not quite. So, uh, has Bayonetta, I mean your mom, been fighting these big bad monsters for a long time? Mummy is a witch, and witches protect people and are very strong. When I grow up, I'll be strong too, and I'll protect my mummy. Wait, you think witches do what? Oh, forget it. No point in arguing with a little kid. I'll manage on my own. I'm sure you will. Mummy! Shit. You never cease to amuse me, Cheshire. I suppose that's your next target? <laughs> this is yours, little one. You didn't cry while I was gone, did you? Nope. Good. Bayonetta, no matter how I ask, no matter how many times, you always say the <sighs> same thing. Come now, Kitty. You know it was all A misunderstanding. Just... You're so stubborn, you know that? My father, he was a journalist too. In fact, he was twice the man I could ever hope to be. He was obsessed with one case his entire career. A case so bizarre it took over his life. They could have made a movie of the details. The followers of darkness, the Umbra witches, and their light world counterparts, the Lumen Sages. Controlling everything with a power known as the Eyes of the World. Then, the Light and Dark Clan suddenly disappeared from their medieval home in Europe. You may be familiar with the town. You're standing in it. Welcome to Vigrid, 500 years later. 500 years? Each clan, working at the behest of the powers that be, sought to lead their fractured world towards peace. They both possessed an eye, said to have the power to create history, that they used to oversee the world. However, their spirit of cooperation did not last. For amongst them, a pair of young star-crossed lovers conceived a child that sent the clans on a path to ruin. The woman was thrown in jail, and the man exiled from his clan. However, the child remained with the Umbra, raised as a black sheep even amongst the darkness. Since the balance between light and dark had been lost, both clans spiraled into decay. Legend had it that the two eyes could be united to control reality itself. And this legend fueled ambition and desire, leading to a myriad of battles between the clans. In fact, it led to their mutual destruction. My father was mocked for buying such a fairy tale. However, I believed his story. And I believe it more than ever now that I've found you. The memory of the clan lingers on, despite the passing of 500 years. What on earth was my father searching for? And why did he have to die for it? I have to discover the truth with my own eyes. That's why I haven't given up my chase for it. Or you. 
the head of the Ithaval group, the multinational that dominates Vigrid, recently tried to sell an enormous gemstone on the black market. If he isn't selling out in the open, it means we're going to have to acquire it by other means. And that starts by sneaking onto that jet. something I am how did you lose it little one do you have anything you really like something really important to you yes this I love it Keep it safe, close to your heart. Here we go, we've infiltrated the military transport. And fell to our deaths. <laughs> Something is causing me to fall to my doom. Something is desperately trying to kill us and then trying to bring the jet down with us. It looks all the pipe pipes into it connected. It's no simple object. But, it di but you destroyed just the same. Ow! Okay, I took damage that time. Wait, wasn't that... That looked like a wicked weave. Which I was somehow in range of. Break dance. Oop. Think a certain someone has returned and is desperately trying to kill us. Take a read of the Barkiri military transport. Unfittingly for unfittingly for a city of small size, Figro plays a host to a large military airbase. The roars of takeoff and landings engulf the city that are not out of the passenger planes, but of incredibly large military transports. 
jets known as Valkyries. I have been I have been aboard a military a, a transport or many times in official capacity, and I've seen many of those finest jets up close. However, none compares to even a distant view of a Valkyrie. The size clearly differ differs is clearly evident, like the difference in size between a crow and an eagle. To think that something like that huge could fly in the sky is something that I could not believe despite having seen it with my own eyes. Of course, there is no doubt that the cargo it carries is quite dangerous, so seeing the plane's huge mass literally drop into the runway during landings, landings causes me to feel deep, deep anxiety, as if the weight of the plane were literally landing on my shoulders. It leads one to wonder what the authorities are bringing into this little uh, particularity or whatever. With all the extensive security they have in place, Figaro has long since cut most ties with the outside world and has re re revered itself within its own unique culture. Perhaps, perhaps it is this influence that leads to the Valkyrie's equally unique design. At a glance, one could see a deep religious influence in its design. Or perhaps the view is simply out of defiance to a plane born of technology so different from our own that we simply nod our heads in astonishment at the sight of Ida Flight. Okay, there's no chest there. Go open the doors. Could've been a little faster. And there goes the cargo. We need to jump our way back into the plane. Oh, looks like we're gonna be fighting angels. And only the one dude. Incoming more angels. You get down here. Pure Platinum. Apparently Rodon has a shop in this plane? Uh, the Gillahorn Defense Initiative. At the center of the man-made island of Ash of Isle del Sol, of Asha da Sol, there is a display of sheer military force, unimaginable for the likes of Vigrod. A display those menacing powers even I cannot sh uh, shake. While there, very little public face to these efforts. Evers, if my information is correct, the military spending here rivals that of even the great powers in the world. Moreover, amongst the power of the enterprises and the government, other buildings stand as anti-aircraft <laughs> countermeasures. <laughs> These buildings, a strategic defense in an, an initiative known as the Gar as the Gotterhorns, are equipped with a battery of anti-aircraft SAM missiles and have been placed in four corners of the island. Can you imagine a business building just being like, all right, we need to build a business building here. Let's fill this thing with, with, with anti-air cannons. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. What in the world causes a small place like this to install such dramatic defenses? There is also a word that the Americans are involved in the armament and expansion of the military complex here. It is said that the... Uh, how did... Uh, Ilka... Uh, Ilka... Uh, Lucas Elka, the Inca Hall group, who is undertaking some sort of next generation energy research, and just has traded the rights to, to this technology for added force of arms. It is not a wholly unbelievable story. Seeing all of the military takeoffs and landings here in Vigro, I don't want to think their destination is actually the place I, I call home. Uh, hey Rodan. I don't know why you have a shop in this plane, but let's have a quick visit. See what you got. 
Check this out. What are you buying? <laughs> Heard that in a game once. Uh, accessories. I could buy an accessory. Uh, which time would be triggered? That might not be too bad. And notify any attack no matter what the strength. That could be good. Let's buy this and maybe buy a technique. Let's get Witch Frost. I don't think there's anything in the treasures I want. Alright, let's equip the artifact. Getting stuck. Come on, Bayo. Break that. Where am I supposed to go? Oh. Uh, I can't remember where I'm supposed to go. There's no clear door or anything. Oh, uh, where do I go? Now I remember why I hate this level. Navigating it is a pain. No, I can't break the door. Where do, do I go in this place? Oh, now I remember. I have to bash this open. Yeah, we have to go on the outside of the plane. Up. Bail. Yeah, have your helmet down. Oh, wait, if I remember something, there's something in this jet. That's right, there's an extra fight here. What? Oh, I'm getting hit by the propeller blades. Get you guys away from the blades. Somehow you guys are not getting hurt by the propeller blades, but I am. That's completely fair. What a good witch time for them. Constant fretting over my state of affairs. I've no time to play games with you. No need to take out your stress on me, Bayonetta. It's clear you're worried for the girl.
Tell me where she is. Now. My, aren't we attached to our precious little one? Do you like it when she calls you mummy? You're absolutely delusional. If I leave her, he'll never shut up about it. And his whining is twice as irritating as anything the child could muster. <laughs> You've quite the tongue when it comes to curling round the truth. And what about you? What are you hiding? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these might mean something to you. <gasps> I've no need for worthless junk. I am well aware of my task, but you have forgotten that I do not need your help. <laughs> Okay, that was pretty cool. Fill them. Fill your eyes with hatred. Accept your violent fate. Accept it and earn the left eye. Prove you deserve it. <sighs> Boss fight time! We're rebattling Jane. She's summoning her motorcycle. Now we have to fight the Jane on a motorcycle. Which in this phase she does hit a little hard. But after doing clocking some damage, she will lose the motorcycle and she'll start using some of your her, um, her version of Bayonetta's weapons against you. Oh, uh, when did I took damage? I'm surprised I took any damage, but okay. Not yet. She isn't ready. Still got a fair bit of the chapter left. There's Rodon's shop. If you need it again, we need to find Cereza. Ow! That's right, the water is electrified. We got ourselves a book, The Treasure Clan's Eyes of the World. Several hundred years ago, and now banished clans of the Umber Witches and the Lumen Sages stood as overseers of time, immor immortal, thriving from their remote European base known as Vigril. However, their regime quickly came to a close via a, vi closed via a violent war that ended in their neutral destruction. Their war, lasting for a hundred years, saw the witches and their campaign of assassination pushed to the brink of victory. Yet the people's fears of these powerful women spawned the witches hunt, spawned the witch hunts, and eventually born the clans. Both clans vanished into e into the ether. 
Long serving the powers to be, it is said that the clans did not use their powers to interfere with history, but rather to protect its passage. We were told that they carried out these duties via the use of their treasured eyes of the world. Yet, with this, with this statement means anyone on guess, what is clear is that the clan's very existence was closely linked to the historical change. So much so that even kings and emperors feared the clan's power that they were, there were two eyes of the world, one on, on each controlled by the witches and the sages. Which, when and used together, is able to carry out, out, the, out the stated task of overseeing. To prevent the powers of these eyes from being used for malicious purposes, they were eagerly split and the clans prohibited to interfere, to, prohibited from inner relations in the effort to maintain balance of the world. Well, that existed between them. The irony is that the Grand War that led to the clan's destruction was sparked by these very treasures. After their downfall, the eyes of the world suddenly disappeared. Aired. Information about them is extremely limited. What sort of item were the, or the eyes? What shape did they take? All of this remains unknown. The black market recently saw a large gemstone come into the market bearing the name Eyes of the World, though it may be a different item under the same name. Even... even... even or even a mafia scam meant to gr grudge the market art reaction. There is no proof that the ancient treasure was actually a gem, but there, but there is reliable uh, a benefit doubting uh, troubling in information regarding the treasure that the CEO of the Ikafel group is said to be he said that he is in search of some unknown item for his development project in next generation energy. But whatever ever it wa has any relations to this matter requires further research. Don't open the book again, Bayo. I want to leave. We gotta leave, now carrying little Cereza with us. We can put her down temporarily, so that way we can fight angels. Uh, keep in mind, it does work, uh, it works exactly like it did, uh, when we escorted her before, where the angels can attack Cereza. Uh, if you leave them unattended. So make sure you try to keep the attention focused on you. We got more angels incoming. Kick, kick, kick. And they're dead. Oh, all oh, right. I can't pick up angel weapons while carrying Cereza, I don't think. Plane starting to sink. You down. Oh, there's no angels, but oh, now here comes the angels. I'll put you down here. That's right. We have to fight the angels while the water's rising. Let's kill you with a chainsaw. Let's cut you in half.
Break dancing. All right, let's get moving. Ah, oh, if I did better on platinum, we gotta go pure platinum. And we managed to escape. Oh, there was a battle I missed. Where did I miss a fight? Anyway, we got a gold. Now, before we end off, let's do some angel attack. Ah, hit the body. Headshot. Miss shot. Headshot. Hit the dude in the back. Nope, I somehow missed. Oh, that was a complete utter miss. Wow, I'm doing awful. How did that miss? Ooh, double kill with one bullet. Oh, come on. I was aiming for the big angel. Oh, yeah, not hitting that. Ooh, two, one shot, two kills, one shot. Give me those halos. Well, we're in the ocean. In the next episode, in the next chapter, chapter 13, we're doing the Cardinal Virtual of, of Prudence, which I believe this is just a bus, boss fight. So, until then, if you enjoyed this episode, do like the video, it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below on your thoughts in this episode, and share the video so more people can discover my content and help the channel grow, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.